Colorado tries to get Amazon's attention with a bright rainbow colored flag. People dialing in support of President Trump's border wall are accidentally calling an office in Denver that helps immigrants. We know for the first time how many Coloradans got a prescription to end their lives. And we better understand who's paying for Congress's fancy retreats. Hey, speaking of pork. He is definitely a celebrity in the area. A community effort to contain a very popular pig. And an almighty looking hand from above appears in Denver. Next. A group that helps immigrants and refugees keeps getting late night phone calls from people asking President Trump to build a border wall. They couldn't figure it out until they realized their phone number is one digit away from the number on a dramatic sounding ad on the Fox News Channel. President Trump is demanding an end to chain migration, an end to the visa lottery, and the building of a wall to secure our southern border. Please pick up the phone now and call. Miss dial one digit and you reach the offices of Joining Vision and Action in Denver. They hear a voice, and that's a live voice, and then they become a little confused. Because they're talking to people from a progressive group, not exactly the build-a-wall team, you know? We must make our voices heard. Again, call. And they do, calling again and again. I got a lot of people who were like mumbling, kind of like, oh, what? what? I don't know what I just called. Um, and so that one... <laughs> A lot of those. I answered probably five to seven in a row. Sarah Heidi says she'd like to learn more about these people who are calling. She has an idea. I thought it would be humorous to answer as if I was a recording and say, hi, thank you for calling to voice your support for refugees and immigrants. One number away, one worldview apart. Great America Pack is responsible for the content of this message. Unless you misdial and end up calling a social justice advocate in Denver, Colorado. That might be awkward. Dial carefully. If you're curious who people are supposed to be calling if they dial the correct number, ads like that one are used to collect information from people who typically don't get involved in politics and typically don't donate. They're trying to build a new bank of people who might be moved by a dramatic sounding cable news ad. Flight nurse Dave Repture fought his way through astonishing injuries. He was burned over more than 90% of his body. Today, the man at the center of our years long investigation on helicopter safety received an astonishing settlement. $100 million. Now, no sum of money could ever heal Dave Repture. After the Flight for Life helicopter crash in Frisco in 2015, he spent five and a half months in a coma. Plenty of days in there where even his doctors thought that he would not make it. He lived to tell his story. It was part of our story about fuel tanks that turned survivable helicopter crashes into terrible fires. The settlement from Airbus helicopters and Colorado-based air methods was due in part to that fuel tank issue. 69 Coloradans got a prescription from their doctor to end their lives last year. That number released today is the first time that we are seeing precisely how many people chose that option in the first full year after Colorado voted to allow physician-assisted suicide. Now, we don't know how many of the 69 actually chose to proceed and take their lives with that medication, and Steve Steger explains why. If a teacher were to grade this report from the state on medical aid in dying, it might be stamped incomplete. No fault to the agency investigating it. Voters approved a law that makes gathering complete data on this issue impossible, all in the name of privacy. First, let's explore what we do know. Doctors are required to report to the state when they write a prescription for the drugs associated with medical aid in dying. They wrote 69 prescriptions in 2017. Pharmacists are required to report when they fill prescriptions. Pharmacists filled 50 prescriptions in 2017. Now, what we don't know. The law requires death certificates for anyone who takes the drugs to list the terminal illness as the cause of death, not the life-ending prescription. So we won't know who actually chooses to end their own life. Here's something else we don't know. How patients are reacting to different medications. One family's experience with a less expensive combination of drugs made headlines last year. The patient's wife told the Denver Post that it took hours for her husband to die after he choked and coughed while taking the medication. A much different experience than the one we heard last year. She held hands and she, uh, she laid back on her pillow and within about two minutes her grip on my hand let up. And I looked up and I never saw her take another breath. 
That's Herb Myers sharing his wife Kathy's experience with us last March. Kathy took Secanol, a $4,000 drug, to end her struggle with COPD. Now, I spoke with Compassion and Choices today. That's the group that lobbied for this law in Colorado. They say they don't feel there is a need for an official report on how a patient reacts to a drug. They say that this has worked in other states anecdotally. In other words, Kyle, doctors talking to doctors and sharing experiences that way, and that's how they figured it out. We did learn a bit more from this report, though. We mm -hmm. learned that more men had prescriptions written for them than women. We also learned the average age, the median age, I should say, 75 years old. That's interesting because so many younger faces were involved in promoting this campaign to the public, but it was older Colorado. Yeah, within the first year. Mm -hmm. All right, Steve, thank you. Just a reminder to wear blue tomorrow, if you like, in honor of fallen Adams County Deputy Heath Gum, and also to show some support for his family. That request came from the city of Thornton, which is where Gum was shot and killed in the line of duty. His funeral is tomorrow at 11 in the morning at Flatirons Community Church in Lafayette. Please don't arrive before 1015. That's so that Gum's family and his fellow first responders can be seated ahead of everybody else. The competition to land Amazon's second headquarters and all of those jobs, it has largely been every city for itself until today when a group of activists kicked off a no gay, no way campaign. They're trying to convince Amazon not to invest in half of the cities on its finalist list, cities and states without discrimination laws that protect sexual orientation. Politics guy Brandon Riddiman explains. Amazon has a really good reputation in the LGBT community, which is why some in that community saw the list of 20 finalist cities and went, what the heck? It was, it was shocking. It was stunning. Um, honestly, it was a little disappointing. Um, you know, our point of view is you can't reward states that discriminate. The new No Gay, No Way campaign highlighted 11 of these cities in nine states on a map of their own. These states are on Amazon's list, but don't protect sexual orientation in all of their anti-discrimination laws, which means it can be legal to discriminate against gay people who are looking for jobs or places to rent. Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper, who agrees with the new campaign, had a different message. This is something that most of the tech community really cares about. Yeah, he pumped the fact that Colorado laws do cover sexual orientation, but he says this could end up lighting a fire under some of these states. I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on them to change their laws and get with, I mean, look how many states have done it. I mean, I think it's an, an interesting idea, and, and I think it's probably going to be very effective. I, w I wish it wasn't effective because I like having Colorado have an advantage yeah. over all those other cities and other states, but I suspect it will be successful. Amazon declined to comment, but pointed out that in its call out for bids, it said it wants places that, quote, support a diverse population. The activists say if Amazon really meant that, these states never should have made the cut. For next, I'm Brandon Riddiman. Amazon hasn't said if it plans to shorten that list of 20 cities, add some drama, whether it plans to pile on more cities, or whether they're just going to pick one. Our next question came from a few of you, Nancy, Jim, Linda, Jeff, and Mark, who wrote, who is paying for the retreat the GOP members were on their way to when the train crashed? Taxpayers or someone else? Fair question. We reached out to Colorado's congressional delegation, some staff members, but we didn't get real clarity on short order today. So we have to look to what Republicans and Democrats, they take a similar retreat, what they told NPR a few years back. The Republican retreats put on by the Congressional Institute. It's a nonprofit that includes ex Capitol Hill types and lobbyists, Republicans. So now that has led to some criticism, obviously, the lobbyist angle. Then you have the Democrats' approach. They told NPR that they used taxpayer money to fund their retreat, which, of course, opens up another line of criticism. So you can decide which you prefer, or maybe just that neither of them or both of those approaches bother you. The Rockies will make some changes to try and make the game safer for fans next season. And apparently it takes a village to corral a popular pig that likes to wander about Colorado. Next. The most Colorado thing we saw today is a ski bike. Well, it's not, no, it's not actually a ski bike. It's more just a bike with skis. Bungee cord version of a bike rack spotted in Steamboat by Karen M. And Karen thought this was distinctly Colorado and a great way to get around. And we agree.
perfect weather to ride a bike tomorrow. We end the week with sunshine and temperatures in the 50s after a cloudy, cooler day today, but not much moisture with today's storm moving through so quickly. I'm meteorologist Kathy Sabin. We're down to 25 degrees after a high of 32 at the airport. Moisture on the northwest flow fairly limited, but a little light snow still expected in the northern mountains. I don't think it'll impact travel if you're getting an early jump on your weekend to go up and go skiing, but several inches of snow likely both Friday and Saturday around Steamboat, Aspen Vale, and Copper. Lower elevations, few clouds around the area, and lows in the mid 20s, so kind of a chilly night. Tomorrow, warmer winds kicking up out of the southwest. It'll get us into the mid 50s. We do have what looks like a dry forecast now. I thought we'd see snow in Denver over the weekend. Looks like the storm will miss us. Isolated snow showers, cooler Sunday, warmer Monday, and the next system rolling in early next week. May bring more snow to areas like northern Colorado, which this morning saw two to three inches of snow in areas like Greeley. Hey, thanks. In small towns, sometimes just a first name suffices. In Niwot, everyone knows Winston. And when they learned Winston needed help, the community stepped up in a big way. Here's Noel Brennan. He is definitely a celebrity in the area. Celebrity means getting noticed. Come on. Every time you walk out the front door, <laughs> greeting fans. Come eat Noel. And putting on a show for the cameras. I get food. Sit. All the way. Winston. All the way. Eats up all the attention. Good boy. Winston is our Vietnamese potbelly pig. He's a 90 pound bundle of joy. Neighbors know Rod Mazone, but even strangers know his pig. <laughs> <laughs> Are, do you guys own the pig? And, yeah, yeah, that's us. That's us. So, I mean, people know Winston well before they would ever know us. Winston's a full fledged member of the family. And no, we will not be eating him at any time. They're raising him, not brazing him. Oh, good one, Noel. Good one. <laughs> they want him to be able to roam a little further than the front yard. This is what we want him to be able to graze. But they don't want him wandering across a busy road. We need to build a fence. Um, between the road and the property here so that way he can freely roam uh, and graze at his heart's content and then he's got a slew of grass to, to graze upon. A new pig fence is pricey, so Rod's wife asked Winston's fans for help. She started the GoFundMe page with a $1,000 um, goal and that was on Monday morning. And by Monday evening, she'd already hit the goal and then some. We're just overwhelmed with the amount of attention and, and, and love that's being shown to Winston. Winston will say thanks in his own way. <laughs> but for now, this celebrity pig needs his privacy. It's hard not to love him. For next, I'm Noel Brennan. And so the family is welcoming anybody who wants to come out and help build that new fence for Winston on the weekend of February 17th and 18th. Apparently they have a bunch of volunteers and an excavation company is offered to come out and dig the post holes. If they end up with any excess fence donations, those will be given to the shelter where they got Winston. A new piece of artwork in Denver grabs you like a giant hand from above because it's a giant hand from above. Next. Great art almost seems to reach out and grab you. Never has that seemed more of an actual possibility than at a hotel downtown where you can see a piece of art called the quantifiable and the ineffable. You likely won't remember the name. You will remember what it looks like. The hand is right inside the front entry of the Maven Hotel. So you walk in and it's right there in front of you. It's about 10 feet long, I'd say, from stem to stern. And it's, as you can tell, it's a large human hand. My name is Andrew Torado. I live in Colorado Springs. I'm an artist. Hey, lady. And primarily do sculpture. And have been exclusively focused on the motif of the human hand. 
you know, I'm not the first artist to say that the human body itself is an amazing and beautiful. I think this piece probably took about three months, three to four months. So the piece is basically made up of a, a number of smaller pieces of wood, typically a lot of decking that are then glued up in blocks and then using a variety of tools, hand tools, power tools, and making depth cuts and chiseling what I don't want away. So you end up with a lot of mark making on the piece and uh, allowing that to remain is also an important thing for me. And I'm taking a lot of repurposed materials, in a sense giving them a new life. They're in some cases literally on their way to the landfill. I get surprisingly few slivers. It's fun to see how your work interacts with the public, but whether or not one thing will become iconic or not, it's really out of your control. So to see the response that it's been getting has been really fun. We want to take a look at the sculptures on display permanently at the Maven Hotel. That's in Lodo at 19th and Wazi. Our sports guy, Aaron Matus, he practically pleaded with the Rockies to do this. And today, Major League Baseball announced it is going to require ballparks to have protective netting in place for opening day. We're talking about netting that goes out at least as far as the far ends of the dugouts. Aaron was moved to say something on next after a young girl was hit in the face by a foul ball during a Yankees game. Just a terrible injury. It got America's attention, too. Aaron argued that he wants to be able to enjoy a Major League Baseball game with his family, with his three young kids. He noted that the NHL hockey, they made changes 15 years ago after a puck hit and killed a 13-year-old. He was hoping that Major League Baseball would make changes before a tragedy of that same magnitude. Rockies told our sports department today that they will be in line with the MLB's new guidelines. No more information about exactly what the netting is going to look like at Coors Field. Of course, the concern from some other fans is about impeded views of the game. Rockies home opener is April 6th against the Braves. Hey, that reminds us to ask, what's Charlie Blackman doing during the offseason? Apparently, Charlie, man about town, this week was hanging out with, with Shaq. If, if you don't follow professional sports, uh, Shaq's the one on the right, Charlie's the one on the left. I don't know who the dude in the middle is. Charlie posted this on Instagram saying, so this happened. Shaq's a real class act, put up with me fangirling so hard. And, and Charlie's also doing some, some deep thinking in the off season. Chuck Nasty tweeting, I'm a little confused about why people create a social media account that's private. If only there were a device for these people that could communicate with select friends via audio, text, or pictures. Chuck Nasty, deep thinker. Hey, speaking of some deep thinking, a lot of you sent some really thoughtful and thought-provoking responses when we asked you, why in the world would anybody have holiday decorations up in February? We are getting some feedback now on my call yesterday for photos of holiday decorations in your neighborhood that are lingering into February. See, because I thought that you might want to engage in a little good-natured public shaming, a little impetus to get them down. Well, it turns out the only person getting publicly shamed here is me, because I learned just how many of you treasure those decorations and have a real system for it. So I learned that some families keep their Christmas stuff up until Candlemas. That's the holiday that celebrates the presentation of Jesus in the temple. And this year, that happens tomorrow. So, no shame, just celebration of everybody who chooses to still celebrate. Long after Christmas, long after the stock show. A few of you even showed us Christmas trees inside still up. Hey, as long as you're watching, that's good. My favorite comment came from Steve Johnson, who didn't like that I talked about guys putting up and taking down lights. He mentioned his wife took care of it at his house. I asked if she might help at mine, and he said no. And she apparently laughed. See you next time.